In this video, I'll spend a few minutes discussing the overhead dust collection on the table saw. Well, the idea for this video came from a comment on my shop tour video. I want to spend just a little bit of time talking about how the dust collection on this table saw was originally designed as it came from the factory and how I've modified it slowly over time as I've come up with ideas to improve it and get better dust collection performance. So we'll get started down here. What I have on here now is a, a four inch universal dust fitting that I bought at a woodcraft store. Comes off the machine at, at a 45 degree angle. On the inside of the machine is another one of these exact same fittings but the 45 degree angle points up. Here's what was originally on the machine. Uh, this piece here. This was on the outside and this was on the inside. This is a four inch connection. This is a three inch connection. This was actually the hose that was inside the machine. It's a three inch hose. Then you had this piece here. It's a one and a quarter inch connection. And that, that small piece was pointed towards the back. And so that provided the the dust collection with the blade guard. And then on the inside of the machine, you had this hose connected to a shroud that's around the blade. Dust collector wants to move lots of air through larger openings, different than a shop vac that can pull air through smaller openings with a lot, of, a lot more suction. You really didn't get much of any airflow through the blade guard on top. Even if you're not using that, it's still blocking a significant amount of the airflow that you had to provide dust collection below the surface of the table saw. And then on the inside, I replaced most of this three inch hose with four inch hose. And there's just the bare minimum of a small piece, three inch hose to connect to the shroud on the inside. And then that connects to a three inch to four inch adapter to the four inch hose that I have on the inside. And so here's the original blade guard that came with it. So you had a one and a quarter inch hose in connection. And then the dust collection, ran through this tube along the blade guard around the front, square profile tube that can move like this as the blade guard goes up and down and would provide a, a, a small amount of airflow in front of the blade. But it, it just really wasn't terribly effective. I, I found that I just didn't really use this. I, mean, I just mostly used the, the other riving knife that doesn't have the blade guard attached to it because it wasn't effective as a, as a dust collection mechanism. And so often there's cuts where this just gets in the way what I found that I was always wanting to be able to do was, was how could I get something above the blade that could move a lot of air and actually draw dust away. In a, in a basement shop, I'm always trying to think of ways that I can collect as much dust as possible so there is less dust flying around in the air in here. One time, I don't even remember, I wasn't even looking for it. I was just shopping on the Rockler website and I came across this arm. When you look at the the listing on the Rockler website, it shows it with the arm fixed, sort of flipped over 180 degrees from how I have it and mounted to the top of a work surface. You can then arrange the arm and get dust collection right to the area. But when I looked at it, I immediately thought I could attach that to the ceiling and bring dust collection down above my table saw. This is a great example of why I love this style piping that I went with. This overhead dust collection was not part of my original dust collection design when I finished my shop. But because I went with this type of piping, it was fairly easy to add another Y at this location and run this line over for the overhead. And in the shop tour video, I talk more about where I got the piping and about the dust collection system. This is a six inch line here. This is a Y with a four inch takeoff that comes off in this direction. I would prefer to have this four inch blast gate here, right close to the Y, but if I put the blast gate there, it throws everything else off so that I couldn't get it up and past all the other obstructions. It goes down through the blast gate and then up and then up and over. I think you can see a little bit more and it follows right along here. And then I'll show you in next where it turns down and comes down over the rest of everything. Okay, so we'll continue on. This may be a little difficult to see right up here. This six inch line goes across the shop and provides the dust collection on the far side for the miter saw station and the downdraft table. Again, there's more information about that in the shop tour video. And there's a 90 degree elbow that can point straight down. And wherever possible, I use 
either two 45s if I have to make a 90 degree turn, or if I do have to use a 90, I'll use one of these longer radius 90s whenever possible. An adapter to connect a four inch flex hose. And then I, for the rest of the run, there's a four inch flex hose down to the hood that came with the arm from Rockler. Okay, now a little discussion about the arm that and what comes, what you get from Rockler. What you get from Rockler with this setup is you get the arm and this hood. It does not come with a hose. Um, all these zip ties, if you see these along here, that, the only reason I have these zip ties here is just to keep the hose contained and, and organized and otherwise it would just be flopping around. The way the arm is intended to use, at least according to the pictures that on the Rockler website, is the whole thing would be flipped over and the base would sit on uh, a horizontal surface. My ceiling is all half inch uh, plywood and so one of the three uh, lag bolts that I have goes into one of the ceiling joists and the other two just bolt into the half inch plywood. And so the degrees of motion that the arm has, this knob here, there's a this there's two tubes here. This one slides inside of this one. So this can be raised up and down by lengthening this along here. This knob can loosen and allows the entire thing to rotate in this orientation here. Then this knob allows for the arm to move in this direction. This knob, much like that one, allows this to go in and out. So for me, that is the main way that I control the height. Then you have a couple of knobs here that help control the, the orientation of, of the dust hood. This one, I, you can tighten it up more, but I leave it fairly loose and so that I can always just kind of position this as I need it over a particular cut. Uh, one thing I'll note is because I'm using it in this way, and with this much hose, I have this string here connected to a hook that's screwed into the ceiling just to provide a little bit more support and it just makes the whole system a lot more stable. If I did need ever need to move the arm around to another location, I can just uh, unhook it from the ceiling. And so that's why that's there. It just gives it a little more stability. Otherwise, you just it's just got flex to it here that it would be annoying when trying to keep it steady right over the cut. So now let me talk a little bit about what I like about this, what I don't like about it, and the plan for what I would like to do in the future. So what do I like about it? My, the best thing I like about it is it, it gives you a lot of airflow here. You get a, a really a good amount of airflow above the blade. For cuts where I can get this positioned right down tight and close over the blade and it's not in the way, it's very effective. The other thing I like about it is it's very easy to position it down over the cut. Tweak it here, I get it here, I pull it right down and I can put it right down over the cut. It's very simple, quick and easy to put right where I need it. Um, so what do I not like? This dust hood is, it's just too big. Really this direction here, it's just too wide. So for a lot of cuts, I can't use it because it would just be in the way and it's black, you can't see through it. So when you have it right down over the blade, if you need to be able to see the cut, like you can't see what's going on. The other thing is the material that this is made out of, this hood that came with the arm, it's really not good for this particular use, both because I said it's black so you can't see through it, and also because it's that, in my mind, cheap and really, really hard, brittle plastic. So it cracks really easily and does not deal well with contacting a moving blade. In fact, it could be a little dangerous because it, it really shatters and you can see that there's tape on here. It's on both sides. And that's not just from it hitting, it just, because it can crack so easily and that's happened, I've had to put this Gorilla Tape on it just to keep this thing together. Actually, a funny story, I actually have two of these arms. I have another one in my attic because the first one I got from Rockler, this dust hood was just in pieces um, when it came out of the box because something had gotten set on the box and it just crushed. This It's just not a durable piece at all. What I would, love to be able to have is an actual blade guard style mechanism for collecting dust above the blade that I could connect a larger hose to and have better flow. So sort of a combination somewhere between what I had originally that came with the saw, but with this type of setup. And I think that that's possible. And the product that I've, that I've looked at, and I just have never spent the time to really pull the trigger on it or, or, or find out exactly what I need is called a shark guard. They're out of Alabama, small uh, company. They make an aftermarket 
blade guard. I believe they say on their website, they'll work with you and your particular saw, table saw model to, to manufacture a riving knife for your saw. Their sharp guard uh, has a lot of different options. You can have different size ports on top for different size hoses. Um, they have an optional light kit where there's a, a, a flashlight that mounts into the top that will illuminate your work inside of the guard. And they have an option for mounting the guard rather than mounting it to a riving knife, mounting it to an arm and suspending it from above. At some point, my plan is to get a shark guard. In general, I think the arm has been effective. And like I said, it provides a good bit of airflow at the top of the blade. It's just there are still some things about it that aren't ideal. While editing this video, I realized there was something significant that I'd forgotten to do, and that was to actually get some footage of using the overhead dust collection. So what I'm gonna do is I have a scrap of some cheap three quarter inch plywood here, and I'm gonna make two cuts. First cut with the overhead dust collection arm out of the way. I'll reposition the arm down over the cut nice and close, essentially the exact same cut uh, with the overhead dust collection arm and I'll try to get some real close up and slow motion footage of the cut in action so that you can get a sense for the difference that, that the overhead arm does or doesn't make. First of all, I apologize for the flicker. Um, that's just recording at a high frame rate with the LED lights. It just creates flicker. When I tried to remove the flicker, you lose a lot of the detail in the image and you couldn't see the dust. So here's a cut obviously without the dust hood. And if you look closely, um, you can see, especially as the shadows start to get there over the, the fence, you can see the dust flying off to the right pretty significantly. Um, and there's, in real life, there's more dust than the camera will pick up. But you can see there's a pretty good bit sliding off there. So now just reposition the hood, so it's, it's easy to do. Put it right down over the cut. Uh, one thing to note is with the, a lot of airflow in that hood, if you have it really, really close to the cut and you're cutting off a thin piece, it will uh, want to suck up your off cut uh, into the hood. So just something to be aware of. Now with the hood in place and uh, collecting dust, you see as the cut progresses, there really is no dust flying away to the right. And even as the shadow comes there across the fence, you can no longer that same that dust that you could see flying off to the right before is not there now. Um, you will see at the end of the cut as the blade exits the back of the wood and, and blows out the back, there will be dust that flies off. Um, but a lot of that is drawn back in. So there you can see the difference that the hood makes. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos. Be sure to check out the description below where I'll have links to my website and social media. There will also be other information and links relevant to this video. Thanks again and see you next time.